No one was expecting it, but the Springfield Echelon Tabletop Reveal and Field Strip is coming up next on GB Guns. When I first heard news of the Echelon, I was somewhat curious, but greatly annoyed by the wave of uh, the influencer videos that all came out at once, just flooding the market with it all. I understand launches and things, and that happens, but it was a bit obnoxious to the point that I didn't watch any of them for quite some time. <laughs> read a few articles, discovered that this pistol does have some things that are different about it. Then I went back and watched some of those videos, and for my own curiosity, I wasn't satisfied with the information that went out there, but I was still curious about the gun itself, so I bought one, and that's how we are where we are. I'm sure someone may be um, bored and lonely in typing up their rage comment about Springfield's activities in Illinois, one of the states that is trying to turn itself into an authoritarian regime. I get that. I understand that. No, I'm not supporting Springfield in concept here. Um, I don't forgive them for what they've done either. However, this channel is about the firearms and the products. I'm curious about them. I want to learn about them. And I want to put out good information to help keep other people safe and help them make their own purchasing decisions or use decisions should they come upon something like this. That's why on this channel we reviewed firearms from several countries, several states, and several companies, many of whom are hostile to the values that we hold dear. However, the firearm still exists. So that's my rant on the politics of it. Let's move on, be mature, and look at the product. In the box, we've got a pouch with the firearm inside. We get a warning about death, a um, test target. This is nice. You know, I used to always admire that Walther did this and then they stopped doing it. So nice to have this in here, a distance of 10 meters. If you're not familiar with HS Produkt, they are a relatively young fire manufacturer in Croatia. They created the XD, they created the Hellcat. Uh, most of Springfield's handguns along that line have all come out of HS Produkt. Um, and I think it's pretty cool to see how far that company has come from its relatively humble beginnings not too long ago. We also have a mag loader, an additional magazine that appears to have a plus two base plate, an additional base plate for the other magazine that's in the gun. Um, that would take it up to 19 round capacity. We have different back straps. Sorry, I can't show you how to swap that in video. YouTube forbids it. And we have our pins for the optics mounting system, uh, which I think is a brilliant idea here. Instead of a plate, you run these pins and they locate into holes on the gun. I'm sure you guys have already seen that in other places, so I'm not too worried about that. Next up, some notes from the manual. One of the things that other videos hadn't satisfied my interest on was the chassis system. So of course I wanted to dive into the manual and there it is. This is what you get, a QR code. I've supported this in the past as a cool idea because that lets manuals be updated constantly uh, without having to reprint. It also helps cut costs down on the manufacturer's side and not printing a manual. So that can result in a slightly lower MSRP for we the consumers. So I scanned this with my phone and then found that you can't get a manual until you register your firearm. <sighs> firearm registration, that's its own bit. Um, whether or not you trust the manufacturer, that's a whole another thing. But uh, let it be said, I did not necessarily want to register this firearm with Springfield Armory, especially since it required my name and address and all my contact information and that kind of stuff. I just wanted the stinking manual to figure out how to take the chassis out. That's not available but I'll show you. Now to take a look at the gun. Interesting choice of uh, barrel length and capacity going with full size, since full sizes aren't exactly hot on the market right now, at least not in the trendiness. Uh, I find the full size pistols to be much more comfortable to shoot. They still have plenty of use as duty guns or as your home defense gun, where size and weight is not a problem and you might as well have bigger you're getting more energy, you're getting a longer sight radius, you're getting a smoother cycling slide, you're getting more to hold on to. But uh, to get on with our regular review format, slide lock to the rear, we flip it over, and do we get mag release or ejection? It appears to be just release. 
They do slide out nicely though because they're metal bodied magazines and no polymer coating to cause friction on the inside of the body of the gun. And you notice that I did, was able to use the magazine release from either side because it's ambidextrous. It's somewhat shielded by that line on the frame there to resist it getting bumped while holstered. I know some people complain about that. Others complain about their grip or their knuckle bumping. I don't see how a knuckle could bump there. Grip, only if you're wrapping your hand way around could you potentially bump that during shooting. I think that's a shooting error uh, more than a firearm error, but um, we all have different hands. We all shoot a little bit differently, so no complaints there. Does the slide release work from both sides? Yes. Does it lock from both sides? Yes. Good job on that HS product. This slide release is a little tiny lever. So you can see it is a little flat piece of stamped metal. Not the most comfortable thing to operate. Um, <laughs> however, it's also not going to be in the way and not something that will be easily ridden. A common shooting error that I have is this thumb ends up right here and then I prevent the slide from locking open while shooting. Not a malfunction of the gun, a malfunction of the shooter by having a hand there. With this being so small that shouldn't be a problem. So I see that as a plus. The slide design is another thing that I heard a lot about and didn't see very clearly until having it in hand. Hopefully this footage will help. But you can see that uh, not only do we have these serrations here but this wing to provide traction and they did the same thing in the back here where it's narrower and then broad so you've got something to grip for racking. That's a cool way of doing it. Also uh, requires removing a bit of material for a lighter slide weight, which is always a positive thing. Coming around the front of the gun, you can see that this uh, micro fissure texture that has been applied on here is also on the end of the guide rod, which is curious. Um, <laughs> Well, that'd be interesting. Slide to frame fit is very tight, as is our barrel. Seems to be very well constructed. Plenty of rail space, including notches that are pretty hard to use, like back here. Um, I get it. I mean, I, I prefer more rail space than less, but there aren't a whole lot of things that fit here. <laughs> we have that same texturing on the front of the trigger guard, as well as a little bit of hook here for the European style of shooting. And then another thing that I've seen that I like is these ledges. Hopefully as the light reflects on it, you can see what I'm talking about. But we've got an actual spot here for the support thumb to rest and to rest the trigger finger or for left-handed shooters, the opposite. And that is also textured. While we're down here, let's talk about the trigger. What uh, I heard was that it was like a 320. What my example feels like is not like a 320. So our safety dingus works. We have a, a light take up to a wall and a pretty clean break. It's a striker-ish thick break, but it doesn't have the clunk that uh, the 320 trigger has, in my opinion. There's our wall, our release, our reset is right back to the wall, rather. A little more mush that time. Yeah, there's a the mush again. Pull weight is on the, I would say, lighter side of what I consider duty use. Still appropriate for carry, but not too heavy and not too light. So, good job there. We have a nice rounding of this undercut here so you don't get that knuckle rub. And a bit of a second undercut to help the support hand get higher. And they've textured down there as well, which is nice. I have handled some guns that have a good undercut here, but it on those guns was kept as smooth as here and you end up with slide happening. Uh, this has some, some good traction to it, some good grip. So again, props. Bring in so you can see that texture once the camera focuses. There you go. It um, is not abrasive to the touch. However, it, it has this kind of melt in your hand feel. It really holds on well. It's similar to the Hellcat, um, what I noticed with this type of texture is it does fill quickly with dead skin cells and dirt and grime, etc. All those little tiny pockets that provide such great traction fill up pretty quick. I imagine you can just hit them with a brush. When you uh, 
go to the pinned comment for the full review over at gbgunsdepot.com. Those photos will be taken after the range session. So we'll see after our first range session how much dirt gets in here. As far as the handling, well, that'll all be on camera too, so you'll know I'm not doctoring anything. Down at the bottom, we have some slight depressions here that aren't textured to help rip a mag out. And look at that, the base plate has that texture as well to make, although a small base plate, make it pretty grippy and even on the front. This curve does give you a little bit of toe kick from the magazine, but not from the gun. My double XL glove hands fit entirely on the frame, so I don't even need that on the magazine. You'd need to have even larger hands for any grip there, but it is a nice touch. This gun seems to be very well thought out. So our back straps. Again, I can't show you the removal of them since YouTube considers that to be gunsmithing, but it's doable. I'm sure how is somewhere in the manual, but I uh, can't get the manual without giving Springfield my personal information. <laughs> Our sights, um, the examples that I saw on the Influencer ones were the U-notch. These are metal night sights and they are, as you may have noticed, a little bit taller than normal. That combined with the fact that you've got the pin system once this plate is removed for mounting your optic should make for a co-witness to be pretty easy to do depending on your optic. This will be reviewed with iron sights as it comes because anytime you change something on a gun you're modifying it and uh, those modifications may impact performance. I've seen plenty of malfunctions happen that were uh, brass bouncing off of the optic and then back in and other malfunctions that unless you know it happened or saw it happen um, it's easy to quickly blame the gun and I don't think that's fair plus each optic has its own weight that changes the reciprocation speed and thereby the energy with which the gun can cycle which changes recoil and changes feeding energy to shove the round in the chamber all reasons why we don't review guns with optics on them if you want to try an optic on your gun I'm totally cool with that but I'm not going to let the optic that I chose impact the performance of the firearm when I review a firearm. On the right side of the gun you can see that we have both controls as necessary and uh, it's pretty sharp looking in my opinion. Next we'll field strip this, take a look inside the gun and I'll show you that chassis. To field strip the echelon, check for clear, lock the slide to the rear and then rotate this takedown lever down. It can be a bit stiff. For some reason, it's easier for me to push with my right hand than it is to pull with my left hand. Then we're going to push the slide back just a little bit further to release the slide, and it comes right off without a need to trip the trigger, which is pretty cool. Just take a look down inside here. And you can see that steel chassis system, which I will remove a bit later. Looking at our slide, we have our plastic guide rod with the textured front end to it, flat coil spring, tap the barrel down to unlock it and remove it out the back. Nicely polished feed ramp there and very, very clean, very clean, nice machining on the inside here of the slide. Check chamber fitment right quick on the barrel by dropping in a known good quality round. This is some Liberty ammunition. What you're listening for is a plunk that, ooh, and interesting. What we want to see is how much brass beyond the bends is exposed. And what you're seeing here is this is not seating very deeply. It's not seating as deeply as it does on other guns. We might have a shallow chamber here. We'll find out when we get to the range and see if it, uh, the chamber if it will close, the slide will close, that will be the major indicator, but this might be an indicator of some sensitivity to ammunition. Since the influencers usually don't even tell you what ammo they're using, it's hard to tell, but that's why we have the what's for dinner test. We'll run uh, 10 round, 10 different loads through it during that, in addition to the 11th load that we use for our ball ammo. We'll tell you what all those loads are and uh, you'll see the results live. But yeah, that was a bit of a shallow fit. Curious. How about that chassis? For those of you new to the chassis system concept, Graham Power started doing it about 20 years ago with a billet chassis inside. However, it was never meant to be removed because they have to serialize everything and so the whole interchangeability thing 
wasn't even a concept. SIG simplified that with stamped steel and made it so that you can swap the grip module uh, or other parts of the gun while the firearm is just this chassis in here. In fact, you see the window into the serial number on the side there. That's because this guts inside is the firearm, not the plastic. What that means is should HS Product, Springfield Armory, or a third party aftermarket come out with other grip modules, let's say a compact or shorter size, all you need is that which can ship right to your door, no background checks, etc. And then you pull this out, drop that in, and change your gun. If you'd like to see more on the 320 aspect of that over at GBGunsDepot.com, we've done plenty of reviews of lots of different modules. Um, and have described the changes and how it makes the gun feel different. It's kind of neat. So to get it out of the echelon, we're going to twist and pull on our takedown lever. See it's got a bar there that it had to push past and uh, just kind of wrench on it. There we go, so it pops out. Now for the part that's a little bit trickier. See that pin there in the middle and that it's forward? That little slot is a locating slot for this thing. And what we've got to do is lift up on our slide stop lever and push forward on the chassis. See it scooted forward a little bit and now we're at the middle spot of the pin there. And from there, it lifts out eventually. There we go. And comes out at an angle. So this is not the firearm, this is the part that you can interchange easily. You can see our magazine release, big ol' honking piece of metal there in the middle. Um, but other than that, that's all we've got for there. And here is our chassis. This is the serialized part. Did notice that it's marked on one side, SI for, uh, or, yeah, <laughs> SI, uh, Ganesco, Illinois for Springfield. And then on the other side here, is HS product HR. HR is for Hrvatska, which is the Croatian for Croatia. This pin here can slide back and forth, so you'll want to be careful not to uh, lose it, but this is effectively your firearm. At this point, there are no uh, aftermarket parts that I'm aware of for changing things. Uh, I'm sure that will fall, though, rather quickly. And you can see how beefy our slide stop lever is and its transfer bar point across there. Um, pretty well constructed. It feels more substantial, more uh, feels thicker than a SIG module does. Um, it is also visually simpler. I don't know if it is mechanically or not. Um, I'm not that much of a nerd into this stuff. Reassembling is the inverse of disassembly. We're going to want to start with that pin being at the rear of this slot here. And uh, I've only done this once before, so excuse me while I figured it out, figure it out on video. I want to come in at an angle and bring everything kind of down into the rear. There we go, and it all snapped back in. You can see here that these holes aren't quite aligned and you can also see that that pin is not all the way forward so we're going to lift up on our slide release lever. I don't know what role that plays mechanically but it does help and then push everything back until we've got clear view through there again. Rest of reassembly is just inverse of disassembly. Only tricky part just like on the SIGs is getting your takedown lever to fit through nicely. Um, it's a combination of rotating and pushing until it gets through there. I'll finish that off camera to save us some time. the slide. Same as any browning action, we're going to set our barrel back in, let it rest in the lock position, and then reinsert our recoil assembly. When we get to the range for the shooting impressions, you will see absolute first shots out of this gun. Our first impressions, we'll do full magazine plus one to test the magazine and gun's ability to run that way. Our trademark what's for dinner test to see what the gun will eat. As I mentioned earlier, we've got a spinner test for sights and trigger control. Then we'll do some practical accuracy before giving concluding thoughts. Now, I'm not sure if I have that lever in the right spot. And that's a pretty good indi indicator that I do not. I can tell because the lever does not want to turn back upwards. So, 
Let's see what happens if I try to line things up with it up. That's not going to work because it'll be prevented there. Now things are locking in. So if you saw there, it went in best in that position. Then you want to rotate it down. Now you can see that we have a flat spot there to allow this to slide on. Bring it to the rear and lock it and flip the lever up. And now we should have functioning gun. I gotta say, so far I'm pretty impressed. I think the build quality and the feature set on this is pretty nice. It is, yes, yet another polymer frame striker fired nine mil pistol. However, I'd argue that this is an advancement in a lot of ways um, and helping to raise the floor to force other companies to innovate more. I'd love to see companies drop the browning action for any of the other actions that I personally feel are mechanically superior and make for better shooting guns. However, I understand they cost more to machine, and so you don't see so many guns out there, especially when price wars are going on. But this should be an interesting one to uh, to shoot. We'll see you at the range. Thanks for watching.